We're in a new chapter, chapter four, and we're gonna learn how to divide by one digit numbers. Lesson 4.1, estimate quotients using multiples. We can use multiples to estimate quotients. A multiple is the product of a number and a counting number. So the multiples of five would be five, 10, 15, 20, and we could keep going. A quotient is the number we get using division. It does not include any leftover amount. That would be called the remainder. We have 15 divided by five. 15 is our dividend, five is our divisor, and that would be equal to three. That's our quotient. We can also write it like this. 15 is our divisor. We're dividing the 15 by five. We're seeing how many fives will fit into the 15. And our quotient is three. We can make a list of multiples to help us find a quotient for a division problem. We need to find 24 divided by eight. We think, well, let's make a list of multiples for eight. One times eight is eight, two times eight is 16, three times eight is 24, there it is. So 24 divided by eight is three. We can also estimate using a list of multiples. If that said 25, we would know that the quotient was in between a three and a four because 25 is in between 24 and 32. Multiplication and division are opposite operations that undo each other. They're inverse operations. Five times three is equal to 15 and 15 divided by five is equal to three. They're like fact families. We can use multiples and multiplication facts to help us divide. Lisa made 74 cookies and wants to put them in boxes. If she puts six cookies into each box, about how many boxes will she need? And the word about tells us we need to estimate. We need to find about how many sixes are in 74. So we need to estimate 74 divided by six. And we can list the multiples of six until we reach 74. We have our counting numbers going in order, one, two, three, four, five, all the way up here to 12 and 13. So the multiples of six are the products in the six facts, six, 12, 18, 24, What's happening is we're doing one times six is six, two times six is 12, three times six is 18, four times six is 24, and we continue all the way up until we get to numbers that are around 74. We find the multiples of six that 74 is between. It's in between the 72 and the 78. 12 times six is equal to 72, 13 times six is equal to 78. And 74 is in between the 72 and 78, so 74 divided by six is in between 12 and 13. 74 is closer to 72 than it is to 78, so 74 divided by six is about 12. That would be a good estimate. So Lisa needs about 12 boxes for her cookies. When estimating a quotient, we can tell which two numbers the quotient is between by finding two multiples of the divisor that the dividend is between. So using very easy numbers, we're gonna use 11 divided by five. The 11 is the dividend, the five is the divisor. We need to find the quotient, what this equals. And we think, okay, the multiples of five are five, 10, 15, 20, and the 11 is in between 10 and 15. That means our quotient is in between two and three, the two numbers that we multiply by. The divisor are the two numbers the estimate is between. So one times five is five, two times five is 10, three times five is 15. And because two and three are the numbers that we multiply by the divisor five, we know that estimate is in between two and three. 
So 11 divided by 5 is about 2 or 3 for a quotient. And the 11 is closer to 10 than 15, so 2 is the best estimate. It's closer to 5 times 2, which is 10. We need to make a list of the next four multiples of 9. So these are the products of the 9 facts. We have 9, 18, 27. So to find the next number, we just need to add 9 more, don't we? That would be 4 times 9, which is 36. And 9 more would be 45. And we can think of it as multiplying 9 times 1, 9 times 2, 9 times 3, 9 times 4, 9 times 5. 9 times 6 is 54. And 9 times 7 would be 63. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 multiples. 9 times 7 is 63. Now we need to list the next four multiples of 10. This is easy. We have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and 70. We just needed to add 10 more to each multiple. And this is 1 times 10, 2 times 10, 3 times 10, 4 times 10, 5 times 10, 6 times 10, 7 times 10, see? Now we need to list the next four multiples of 100. This should be easy also. We have 100, 200, 300, 400. This is 100 times 1, 100 times 2, 100 times 3, 100 times 4, 100 times 5 is 500. Now we have 100 times 6. That's 600. This would be 100 times 7, which is equal to, if you said 700, you got it right. And we can find the next multiple by just adding 100 more. We need to estimate 298 divided by 5. If we list the multiples of 5, they aren't great enough. 1 times 5 is 5, 2 times 5 is 10. We get 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Those are nowhere near 298. Our list would be very, very long. Well, when this happens, we can multiply by multiples of 10 so each product is greater. So instead of multiplying by 1, we just multiply by 10. We're adding a 0 to the factor, so there's going to be a 0 in the product, isn't there? We have 10 times 5 is 50. 20 times 5 is 100. 30 times 5 is 150. See the basic fact? 3 times 5, there's a 0 in the factor, so there's a 0 in the product. 4 times 5 for 40 times 5 would give us 200. 4 times 5 is 20. We got a 0 in the factor, 0 in the product. See that? So we get to 50 times 5 is 250, and 60 times 5 is 5 is 300. So 298, well, that's in between 250 and 300. That means our quotient is going to be in between 50 and 60. And 60 times 5, which is equal to 300, is closer to 298 than it is to 250. So 298 divided by 5 is about 60. That's a good estimate. A baker has 97 apples. She needs 8 apples to make 1 apple pie. About how many apple pies can she make? So we need to estimate 97 divided by 8. And we think some number times 8 is about 97. We can make our list. We've got 10 times 8 is equal to 80. 11 times 8 is equal to 88. We just need to add 8 more to each multiple to find the next one, don't we? 12 times 8 is equal to 96. 13 times 8 is equal to 104. And 97 is in between 96 and 104. So 97 divided by 8 is going to be in between 12 and 13 for a quotient. And 97 is closer to 96 than it is to 104. It's 
97 divided by 8 is about 12. The baker can make about 12 pies. We need to find two numbers the quotient is between, then estimate the quotient. We have 38 divided by 3. We can make our list of multiples. We've got a 38, and we think right away, well, we know 10 times 3 is 30, and that's pretty close, so we can start with 10 times 3. 11 times 3 is equal to 33. 12 times 3 is equal to 36. 13 times 3 is equal to 39. And we really don't need this one, do we? Because we already found the two numbers, 36 and 39, that 38 is in between. So we didn't even need that one. So the first few multiples of 3 weren't great enough, so we began with 10 times 3, which is equal to 30. And the quotient is between 12 and 13. And 38 is closer to 39, so 38 divided by 3 is about 13. We need to find two multiples that the quotient is between. We have 236 divided by 7. And the first few multiples aren't great enough. We've got 7, 14, 21, 28. That's very far away from 236. So what we can do is multiply the multiples by 10. Instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, we can multiply by 10, 20, 30, 40. We're going to have a 0 in the factor, so we'll have a 0 in the product. That'll make the products greater so that we'll get closer to 236. And we see that 30 times 7 is equal to 210, and 40 times 7 is equal to 280. So we know the quotient is between 30 and 40. And 236 is closer to 210, so 236 divided by 7 is about 30. So just remember that a multiple of 7 is a product we would get when we multiply by 7. So a multiple of 8 would be a product we would get when we multiply by 8, and so on. And when the factors are greater than 10, and not near the product we need, these are too small, we can multiply the factors by multiples of 10, and using mental math, we're putting a 0 in the factor, so we put a 0 in the product. Now for these, we need to decide whether the actual quotient is less than or greater than the estimate that is given. So for this one, we have an estimate of 13, and for this one, we have an estimate of 30. We need to write a less than symbol or a greater than symbol. We have 107 divided by 9. We think, well, 10 times 9 is 90, and that's going to get us close, so we can start with 10. Then 11 times 9 is equal to 99. We can find 12 times 9 by adding 9 to the 99. We get 108, and 13 times 9 is equal to 117. We only need 107, and that's 107 is less than 12 times 9, so it's got to be less than 13. So 107 divided by 9 is less than 13. Now for this one, we have 126 divided by 4, and 10 times 4 is only 40. But we can look at the basic facts of 3 times 4 is equal to 12, and if there's a 0 in the factor, there's a 0 in the product. So 30 times 4 would be 120. If we add 4 more, we'll have 31 times 4. That's 124. But we have 126. Our dividend is greater than the product of 31 times 4. So we know it's definitely greater than 30, it's greater than 31. So it's definitely greater than 30. So it helps to make a list of the multiples and the facts to answer problems like these. A bakery has 280 apples. They need eight apples to make one apple pie. And the baker says they can make about 40 pies. 
and the baker's assistant says they can make about 30 pies. So who is correct? Well, for the baker and for the assistant, we need to do 280 apples divided by 8 to find how many pies they could make. We can start with 10 times 8, which is 80, then do 20 times 8, which is 160, 30 times 8, which is 240, and 40 times 8 is 320. When the baker said about 40 pies, well, that means they would need 320 apples, and they have 280. When we look at what the assistant thought, that they could make 30 pies, they would need 140 apples. See that? If we look at a number line, here we have 280. The assistant said 30 pies, which is 240 apples, and the baker said 40 pies, which is 320 apples, but this 280 is halfway between 240 and 320. There's a difference of 40 here and a difference of 40 here. So both 30 and 40 are equally correct to be an estimate. But if you look for the 30 and 40, and we know 280 is directly halfway between these two multiples, the best estimate is halfway between 30 and 40 as 35. When we find two numbers that a quotient is between, we are finding a range of numbers that includes the exact answer. So here's an example. Sarah's brother is a teenager. To be a teenager, he must be between 13 and 19 years old. And Sarah's brother can be any age from 13 to 19. He could be 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, or 19. One of these ages is the correct age. But we don't know his exact age just a range of ages that he could be. But one of these is correct. So just like we multiplied with multiples of 10 to make our multiples bigger, we can multiply by multiples of 100 if a dividend is four digits. So here we have 1,912 divided by five. We need to find the quotient. And if we start writing the first few multiples of 5, these are way too small. Look at this, 5, 10, 15, 20. Do you know how long our list would have to be to get up into the 1,900s? So we can just multiply by multiples of 100. Instead of multiplying 5 times 1, we can do 5 times 100. And we have two zeros in the factor, so there'll be two zeros in the product. Then 200 times 5 is 1,000. See the basic facts of 2 times 5 is 10. We have two zeros in the factor. We have two zeros in the product. And then 300 times 5 is 1,500. And 400 times 5 is 2,000. 1,912 is in between 1,500 and 2,000. And 1,912 is closer to 2,000. So 1,912 divided by 5 is about 400. In our next lesson, 4.2, we're going to talk about what happens when we can't divide evenly. We're going to talk about remainders. Keep trying. I'm proud of you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.